So there's going to be a lot of back and forth going on with this podcast just because as I'm literally recording this, I've got my screen open right now. Roster moves are happening in real time as I'm recording this podcast. So as of tomorrow, Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, if I'm not mistaken, that's when the 53-man roster has to be set for all 32 teams across the NFL. So literally cuts are happening while I'm doing this podcast. And in one particular move, a trade has been made. We'll start with that. Danny Isadora, formerly of the Minnesota Vikings, guard has been traded to the Miami Dolphins for a seventh round draft pick. This isn't a loss at all. I mean, maybe for depth, but this isn't a guy that you would want to rely on to come in and fill in maybe for a couple of plays or maybe half a game or worst case a game. But over the course of multiple games, that isn't a guy that you want out there protecting your quarterback or run blocking for Dalvin Cook. So he's gone. The fact that they got when I first heard when I first saw that that trade had been made, I said for a seventh round draft pick, I said, oh, of course, Spielman, he loves his seventh round draft picks. But then I thought more and I said, well, the fact that they got anything for Danny Isadora, because who knows, for all we know that he was probably going to get cut anyway. The fact that they got anything for Danny Isadora, I'm good with it. So it's a seventh round draft pick, basically a fringe undrafted free agent in, uh, I believe, 2020 is the year that they're going to get that for next year's draft. Hey, I'll take it. You get what you can get for Danny Isadora. So he has been traded to Miami Dolphins. Also, before I get to the next topic, the cuts that have happened so far for your Minnesota Vikings, we have D'Angelo Henderson, Cornelius Edison, center Cornelius Edison, Darren Smith, safety. So he played, came from the AAF League before it got shut down. And Alexander Hollins, wide receiver, those four players have been cut. So D'Angelo Henderson, Cornelius Edison, Darren Smith, and Alexander Hollins. They have been released from your Minnesota Vikings. So let's get to the next thing that I want to talk about. For sure, cuts that I think the team is going to make, that I'm leaning. Basically, the way things are working right now, I think they're going to let these four particular, no, three particular players go. One is I'm still on the fringe about where earlier, a couple of weeks ago, before the preseason, I said this guy I think he's going to get cut. But now, as I think about it more, I don't, I'm not too sure about it. So let's start with the three for sure cuts. Holton Hill, I think he's gone. He suspended the first eight games of the season, and he's had a horrendous preseason against the threes, against the fours, against the bottom of the barrel. Guys that are probably not going to be working in the NFL or going to be fringe roster players, bottom of the barrel roster players. He was terrible this preseason. And of course, It's only fitting that Holton Hill gave up a game-ending touchdown to end the entire preseason. I think he's gone. He's being suspended for half half the year this 2019 season, and he sucked during the preseason. So his talent really isn't showing what he did in 2018. I saw this by the Star Tribune. Uh, Holton Hill, he vows to be, what does this say? Vows to be reliable upon his return. Well, that's great. It's all fluff. It's great words. It's nice and really beautiful for you to say right now. But you have been unreliable going back to your days at the University of Texas. And after your first year, you're already, you've already been suspended twice. I don't trust you. I don't. This seems to me like a Josh Gordon situation. He may have a lot of talent, but my God, time after time again, we're talking about a guy going into his second year. How long can we put up with this? I don't think Mike Zimmer is. And he alluded to the fact, too, this guy might not even make the team. I don't think his patience is strong enough. If anything, he might make the team just because our cornerback performance overall this preseason has been terrible. So if anything, he might make it for that. But I just don't think he's reliable. I just don't think he's worth the headache. So Holton Hill, that's a guy that I would think the Vikings will let go of. Next, Amir Abdullah. Only because Mike Boone came in and kicked ass. In fact, I'll talk about it later on. Mike Boone has been my preseason offensive MVP for your Minnesota Vikings. Mike Boone has. He has shredded all the opportunities that he had out there. And he had a tackle in punt coverage in the Arizona Cardinals game. And how about, and this is, I might as well say it now, an honorable mention on double R play of the game. It's not the double R play of the game. In fact, I have two plays of the game because I can't pick just one of them. But the honorable mention that I have is that Mike Boone, with what we thought was 
and a fumble by Kyle Slaughter, but it got turned over. But Mike Boone ran his ass off and chased Dude down to make the tackle. That was a hell of an effort type of play right there. I appreciate that. But he is your offensive preseason MVP for your Minnesota Vikings. So because of that, we have a lot of different return men available. Amir Abdullah, I think he's going to be cut. Matt Weil, I don't think that the Vikings are going to cut Corey Vetvik just because Rick Spielman has way too much pride to let go or to admit wrongdoing or admit a mistake or admit that a player just didn't work out on recent personnel moves. Now, last year he did cut Daniel Carlson after week two, so that really went against the grain of Rick Spielman. But still, overall, bigger picture, Rick Spielman has a lot of pride and giving up a fifth-round draft pick for Kari Vedvik. I just don't see them letting him go despite his crappy field goal uh, attempts this preseason. I don't see them letting him go, so I think Matt Weil is going to be the sacrificial lamb. And then this is the fringe guy that I thought for sure would be cut, but now I'm not so sure. And let me refresh this page right quick just before I say his name in case it comes up like, boom, here he is. Nope. No other moves have been made. No other cuts have been made since I last talked about it. Laquan Treadwell, I'm starting to think that he's really going to be on this team. I really, really do. We'll just have to see. He can block all the other receivers. BC Johnson has looked nice. Brandon Zilstra has looked nice as well. But I'm starting to think maybe that blocking aspect of his talent that he has can be useful. So I think they're going to keep him, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do cut him. So I'm not going to say for sure cut for Laquan Tret. Well, I think they're going to keep him. Now, moving forward from that, the only takeaway I have from the Vikings and Bills game is just Kyle Sloter. He went out there, and yet again, he looked good. He did a really good job yesterday. Now, what was different about this was he finally turned the ball over. We thought, I thought he at first, I thought he turned the ball over with that fumble that got called back. But then after reviewing it again, he did have control of the ball before letting it go. So if he got hit and all of a sudden the hit jarred the ball loose, then that would be a fumble. But he kept control of the ball. He did throw an interception. So he finally officially turned the ball over during the preseason. And this was the first time that he faced any sort of adversity on the field he's definitely facing adversity against the coaching staff who just seems to come up with every which way to just beat this dude down and I hope he makes the team I'm already past the fact that Sean Mannion he's going to be your backup quarterback if nothing else I really hope he makes this roster because you can't let him go he has way too much talent way too much potential to say you know what we're good at this in this sport At that position, quarterback, which is the hardest position in all of sports to identify, and you had that who goes out there time after time again and lights the field up and destroys the competition, completing over, what, 70% of his passes, you can't let him go. He's got that it factor, and you have to see what is up with this dude. So if Kirk Cousins, let's say this is the year where he's going to really show us who he is, Kirk Cousins, If it doesn't work out and this isn't he's not the answer for your long term franchise quarterback, then you need some sort of backup plan. What are you going to do? Say, well, at least we got Sean Mannion. No, you got to find out what you have in this dude, Kyle Sloter. So I hope he makes the roster as the QB three. I think he should be the backup quarterback, even though my thing is give him the opportunity to go up against the two so we can really find out. But I hope, if nothing else, you keep three quarterbacks on the roster with Kyle Slaughter because I don't want to see him go anywhere else and shine and just be an absolute stud somewhere else because that will really haunt this franchise. Releasing Kyle Slaughter will be a massive, massive mistake, potentially speaking. But getting back to the point, Kyle Slaughter, he turned the ball over. He threw an interception, and this was the first time he faced adversity on the field. And what happened? That very next possession, he got back on the field, led the offense to the red zone for a 27-yard field goal kick by Corey Vetvik. Actually, getting back to that, give it up for Corey Vetvik, everybody. He finally made a field goal. Good for you, man. Good for you. Like I said, I think they'll keep him on as a punter. But he finally made a field goal, baby. But that's those days of questions of, oh, is he going to be the place kicker? No, that's out the window. Your place kicker is going to be Dan Bailey. But 
Kyle Slaughter, he overcame adversity, led a field goal, got points on the board that very next possession after that interception that he had. So he looked good yet again, and he showed you anybody can ride the wave when everything is going well, and you throw seven touchdowns, no interceptions, and all that fun stuff, and you've got Barstool Sports all up on your back and supporting you just like I am, where they're like, man, Kyle Slaughter is the greatest preseason quarterback of all time. Hey, I wouldn't even argue against that. But then when things go against against you, when things Don't go your way on the field. How do you respond? I think that showed a lot of his character, his poise, his toughness, his focus. He has way too much to offer to just simply say, well, let's just let him go. The fact that you have Sean Mannion over Kyle Slaughter is already an insult to the intelligence of this fan base and to everybody that's watching the same damn games that you are on the sidelines. You had front row seats and you're still coming up with ways to trash him, but you can't let him go and potentially shine somewhere else. At that spot, that quarterback position, you can't do it. So let's see. Has there been any other moves since then? I'll react literally in real time as I'm doing this. No other moves. So everything's still good to go so far. Now, I talked about this offensive MVP. I talked about that, or preseason offensive MVP was Mike Boone. He did a hell of a job. He was the standout player. And when I say technically, you could say Kyle Sloter, but when I say offensive MVP I'm talking about guys that are expected to make contributions to your Minnesota Vikings roster in 2019 Kyle Sloter let's say they do bring him on even if Kyle uh, Kirk Cousins were to go down Sean Manny would be the next guy up so whatever but Mike Boone he's going to be the third running back hopefully don't keep Amir Abdullah Mike Boone is the way to go preseason offensive MVP Mike Boone for defensive preseason MVP. I've got two guys. So your co preseason defensive MVPs. This is a tongue twister. If there isn't one at all, J Ron curse and if Eddie Odenibo, I'm going to butcher his name. I'll get it right. At some point. I know the last week's broadcast during the Cardinals game, they, pro- they pronounced his name three different ways. Odenibo, Odenibo, uh, Odenibo. Like I'm going to butcher his name. I'm going to eventually get it right. My apologies, but J Ron curse, and Odenibo, those have been your co-defensive MVPs of the preseason. They did a hell of a job. Odenibo and Jaron Curse, obviously, they're both going to be on the team, but they're both going to make. I think they're going to make significant uh, contributions to this team on the defensive side of the ball. Jaron Curse on big nickel packages, and Odenibo in rotational fronts for the defensive line. So, those are your offensive MVPs and co-defensive MVPs. For your preseason Minnesota Vikings. Now, let's get to the double R play of the game. Or in this case, your double R plays of the game. There's two plays that I have. One on offense and one on defense. I couldn't choose between the two at all. So I had to pick both of them. Let's start with offense. It's been a very pleasant surprise for the Bills. On third down, Sloter scrambling. Throws across his body along the sideline. And they're going to say that's a catch. So what we have right now is Kyle Sloter. He's in the shotgun formation at the Buffalo Bills 35 and a half ish yard line. He moves out, snaps the ball, moves out to his left. He senses the pressure. So he moves out to his left. And that's the thing with the poise about this dude. He senses the pressure, but you notice he still has his eyes downfield. So he's not panicking, looking around. Oh, look at all these guys coming around me. He moves out. He senses it without staring at it and still is looking to make a play down the field, moves out to his left, gets closer to the sideline, gets closer to the out-of-bounds sideline to his left, and right before he gets any closer, he launches a zip of a pass, and that's another thing that's so great about him. His arm strength is really good, got really good zip on the ball, launches a pass, just threads the needle over the defender before it hits Brandon Zilstra, who really made... An Adam Thielen type of play. He caught the ball and kept his feet, just dragged his toes, kept his feet inbound, dragged his toes inbound right before going out of bounds. That So that's really a double whammy. Kyle Sloter with the great play, just getting it over the defender. And Brandon Zilstra hauling in that pass and keeping his feet inbounds on third and nine, okay? Third and nine, and they did that. That is clutch right there. I don't care that it's third stringers or whatever the hell. That was a clutch-ass play. I love it. So that is your first 
double R play of the game. The next double R play of the game is on the defensive side of the ball. And Jackson, quick pass, his first attempt of the night, and it goes for a loss as Ray Ray McLeod is taken. So what we have here, the Buffalo Bills, they are at their own 25-yard line in shotgun formation. They snap the ball, immediately throw the screen pass to the left, in which Marcus Epps, Marcus Epps is getting blocked by number 87. It looks like that's his number. By number 87, to which he recognizes it's a screen. He's getting blocked immediately. And Marcus Epps goes, man, get your bum ass out my face. I'll tackle the both of you. Pushed him. Pushed him back. Kind of like Hercules Mata off a couple of uh, games ago. Actually, I think he did it against the Cardinals as well last week. Just super strong. Pushing dude out the way to get to the guy that you're going after, the ball carrier. In this case, it's number, I don't even know who these guys are. These guys are probably going to get cut at some point. Number 14 of the Buffalo Bills catches the ball. Marcus Epps says, get the hell up out my face. Manhandles, absolutely mauls and manhandles. Number 87, the blocker. Laquan Treadwell, he would have blocked the hell out of Marcus Epps right there. Pushed him into 14 and tackled the both of them for a tackle for loss. That was an outstanding play by Marcus Epps. So those are your two double R plays of the game. So let's lastly, before we end this, let's see if there's any other moves that have been made. Any other roster cuts or trades? Ooh, let's see what we got here. Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it. Ah, I just saw Algic Robertson is a free agent again. So if you want to really, if you don't think BC Johnson is that guy, go out and get Algic Robertson. All he did was catch touch, touchdowns last year. But that's all we got, folks. If they, oh my God, please don't cut Kyle Slaughter. Don't cut Kyle Slaughter. You need to keep him and see what you got. Because I'm telling you, if Kirk Cousins, if he's not the guy, if he's not the answer, then we're going to go back into the days of Christian Ponder and Tavares Jackson. We already know that. Not to say that Kyle Slaughter is going to be the savior. I love that YouTube account that follows me. Slaughter is your savior. I think it's absolutely amazing. But not to say that Kyle Slaughter is for sure going to be the answer if Kirk Cousins doesn't work out. But you owe it to yourself to find. He has done everything on the field possible. Everything on the field. For anybody else that perform, performs on the field, even in preseason, we say, wow, good job. But with Kyle Slaughter, nah, you know, I don't know. I don't. It's just funny the amount of times that we screw over good players, Jarius Wright and now Kyle Slaughter, for bums like Blair Walsh or Matt Khalil, Laquan Treadwell. You find every which way to bring out these bums or go out of your way to experiment with the kicker position, which you did again yesterday. I even talked about on Score North, the uh, podcast I did, uh, goodness, that was on Wednesday where I said, there's no reason to bring out Corey Vedvik as a kicker because we know we saw what we saw in Arizona. There's no reason to do it, but they did it anyway in Buffalo. They split reps with Dan Bailey and Kari Vedvik and decided, you know, let's give him one more shot for what? And he still sucks. Okay. So anyway, don't cut Kyle Sloter. Keep this dude. I, and if he goes somewhere, I'm a big fan. I'm going to follow him. I want to see this man succeed. At least get the opportunity that he rightfully deserves. We do this three times a week mediocre at best sports podcast with realistic randy you can check me out on twitter at realistic underscore randy facebook at realistic randy next podcast will be on the score north's youtube channel that's score north s-k-o-r north one last refresher before anything uh nope that's it that's the moves that have been made so far We'll see what happens, obviously, later on today, this Friday, and before 4 p.m. Saturday, things are going to happen. Overall, one last takeaway I have, outside of the cornerback group, I feel really, really good about this team. Next week, uh, we'll talk about it more. And then on, goodness, goodness this is going to be on well, Wednesday or, or Thursday on Score North. I'll preview the Vikings versus the Atlanta Falcons game to open up the NFL season for your Minnesota Vikings. Again, we do this three times a week, Mediocre Best Sports Podcast with Realistic Randy. I do an extended audio podcast on SoundCloud and iTunes. You can find the link to that podcast in the description of this video. 
On that extended audio, up next, I'll talk about Ezekiel Elliott and this holdout situation with the Dallas Cowboys and my takeaways on it because I think that they are really, real. the Cowboys, they really have their priorities screwed up. Zeke should get paid first out of Dak Prescott, Amari Cooper, and Ezekiel Elliott. You should pay Ezekiel Elliott first. I'll talk about that next. Again, in the extended audio podcast, Mediocre at Best Sports Podcast with Realistic Randy. Bye.